ka whakaākona te wehi ki a tātou. Ka mutu me he pīrangi ka tāia te ako ki a puta. I'm a portal. I'm a woven woman. I'm practically a painting filled with strange strokes and dots that form fully when you take a step back. I'm the mermaid swimming between worlds, the Pākehā and the Māori, the creative, the academic, the dream, the reality, the introvert, the extrovert, the mountain, the sea, a Māori mermaid, that's me. Ko Taranaki te maunga, ko Whanganui te awa, ko Aotearoa Tanganui te waka, ko Mahurihuri te hapu, ko Ngāpui, ko Ngātirua nui ngā iwi, ko Jessica Thompson. Toku ingoa. I'm from Otipoti, Dunedin. My Instagram handle is Māori Mermaid. That's my artist name, I suppose. My drawing and my digital art is a way I navigate who I am and my place as a Māori and Pākehā wahine. In primary school I was really confident in my identity and I just like blur my mihi out to anyone who came around. And then getting into high school, the way that society is, it wasn't cool to be Māori. When you're young, you're told by every single platform that Māori is lazy, that Māori is stupid. To be a certain way, talk a certain way, you're not going to succeed if you're Māori. When I was in high school, I would copy sketches from all the art books that I could find in the library to learn about the way that bodies worked and the way that I could draw hands or feet or different expressions. I feel my most calm when I'm drawing, my happiest. We don't have any control over anything really. And, you know, we're all dying, so <laughs> it's really important to have something that makes you feel safe. I got my iPad last year, start of last year. People watching this, if they know how Procreate works, they're going to be real frustrated because I'm colouring in so much. There's this button that drops down the colour and actually fills it in. But personally, I really like the therapeutic feeling of colouring in. First year of university, I would say, oh, I'm Māori. I'm Ngāpui Natirua Nui. You'd get challenged, you'd get, oh, but how much Māori? What percentage are you? I got a lot of comments like, oh, I don't really see it. I guess I can see it in your mouth. And then they just leave it like that. And it's like, oh, what just happened? OK, um, great. I'm glad that you can at least see a little bit. Uh, that validates me. But later into uni, I went on a student exchange. And there's nothing like a student exchange to, you know, get you to have that identity crisis. Being away from this whenua, being away from my family, really forced me to reflect on who I am. I was going all around Europe. I would tell people I was Māori there, and no one would challenge me. And they'd get really excited but then they'd ask me all these questions that I didn't know the answers to. And I would have freakouts and panic attacks about this because all of a sudden, someone wants to know about my culture, but I don't even know about my culture. When I got home, I started talking to my mum more about it. I wanted to know about more family members. I wanted to know about how far down the line can we trace. When you learn about your sepuna and you really feel a, start to feel a connection, it's like, oh, I'm not alone. I'm actually never alone. Why was I so scared? 
and it slowly turned into drawings and creating art and writing poetry to make sense of it. Gardeners and voyagers, people who soothed and fed Tamariki to urge the waters forward, sung their descendants into the soil. I live for you, I breathe for you, I move with you. My veins are ribbons, artfully woven from the first wahine's hands. They loop from the roots of my toes to the tips of my hair. Incredibly complicated and impossible to copy. Kotiro Hinerangi is the furthest person we can trace back. She was a slave and married Alexander Gray. They made beautiful daughters who guided wahine and tāne through maunga and pink terraces. From Kutiro, we began in name. From Papatsuanuku, we were born Mana Tauri. I draw a lot of mermaids. A lot of what I portray through my mermaids is that whole displacement thing, being a part of two worlds, having to sort of patch yourself up again. So she's sewing her tail back on. And that's kind of what it feels like for me being Māori. It's a healing process, but it's also really quite um, dark and sad as well, and uh, kind of messy, like the charcoal. <laughs> And sad looking through my whakapapa and seeing the empty spaces, seeing the things that we can't record because it was destroyed, um, because the wahine and Afano were not recorded or they weren't really treated right, so we don't know who they were. And it's been interesting, it's been hard. It's hard to not know exactly where you come from because of colonization, because people came in and, and hurt other people. I react if I had to put some things in the past to and don't let them distract you, but react if you have to. When I'm putting up drawings about my heritage, about not being enough or trying to tell myself finally that I am enough, I get really lovely messages and people seem to really connect with some of the stuff I put out. I have met so many people who feel the same way and I never realised that we were all in the same waka like that. People who feel inadequate, people who are not feeling enough Māori, that's such a vibe, eh? Everyone's feeling that and, and I didn't know anyone was until I started sharing my own stuff. In between tasks, doing the dishes, brushing my hair, before starting a new book, stumbling through a te reo lesson, strapping on platform heels, booking a doctor's appointment or getting my nails done, I feel the warm breath of my tipuna behind me. And I wonder, would you be proud? Have I utilised your gifts respectfully? Would you like who your tuhanga has become? They cannot answer now, so I answer myself. As a future ancestor, what do I want for my own tuhanga? What would I say to them? Ko auaha a atamai e pā rekarekāna. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.